Republicans, conservatives, the right, they could have done a critique of this committee that was, I don't know, somewhat legitimate. They could have said, it's partisan, it's biased, we don't agree with it. But still at least acknowledge these four officers and the trauma they endured. Instead, they either ignored them or mocked them. This is beyond politics. This is just cruel. It's heartless. It's antisocial behavior from the leadership of one of our two parties and from one of our most watched cable news channels. Well, I cannot disagree with you. I, I think it is uh, grotesque to watch them mock police officers who put their lives on the line to protect and defend not just uh, the members uh, who are just feet away from this violent mob, but also democracy itself, the peaceful transfer of power. These are things that are not, they're not trivial. I mean, this is, it, it, it goes so far beyond, you know, tit for tat about arguing about, oh, you know, but you never criticized the Black Lives Matter violence or, you know, that it's, it's so far yeah. beyond that because this was an attack on democracy itself. We do not know as of this moment whether the next election will be peaceful or not. We don't know. There has been a fire lit on the right. Uh, that may not, you know, it, it may be simmering right now, and just we just don't know where this goes. So that those are the stakes, and uh, and it is grotesque. I think we should yes. though mention that both Mayor, uh, that both Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger uh, did serve on the committee against the wishes of the uh, minority leader um, and performed yes. very well. And I, don't, I shouldn't say performed, but you know what I mean. They they. They showed true yes. emotion. They were um, committed to democracy, and they and and they deserve all honor for doing that. Yes, but sadly, two out of two hundred odd Republicans uh, in Congress. Eric, a CBS News poll this month found that while most Americans say January sixth was an insurrection that tried to overturn the election, more than half of Trump voters describe it as patriotism and defending freedom. Uh, what can you say about the right wing media ecosphere? pushing conspiracy theories about the insurrection and now laughing at the trauma of cops that survived it. I mean, Eric, I keep trying to imagine if after 9-11 we had a left-wing media industry that belittled New York police officers or pushed one in three Americans into becoming 9-11 truthers in the way that one in three Americans is now a one-six truther. Yeah, could you imagine? Look, I mean, uh, it, we, we've been dealing with the big lie with the election for six months. There's a new big lie that the uh, with the, uh, you know, the rigged election, the new big lie on the right on Fox News that the insurrection never happened. You know, Trump calls it a peace fest. Uh, Britt Hume on last uh, on Fox News last night said it was a mostly peaceful event. Tucker Carlson is making jokes about it, it was a bunch of grandparents with placards. You know, we, we use words like shameless and gaslighting, and, and they know, they nowhere come near what is happening. Uh, this is the QAnization of Fox News, of the entire Republican Party, of the entire conservative movement. Uh, you know, conservative misinformation, Fox News 10 years used to be, well, we're, you know, we're going to spin tax policy. We're going to say why Barack Obama's health care doesn't work. We are so far beyond that. We are into a realm of conspiracy, yes. uh, of, of, of dark waters, and if... You know, people thought last year, well, Fox News will never deny that there's a pandemic, right? Wrong. This year, Fox News would never go full anti-vaxxer, right? Wrong. Fox News would never mock Capitol Police by name on national television, people who are almost bludgeoned yeah. to death? Wrong. They will do it. There, Fox, there is no bottom at Fox News. There never has been. There never will be. And Rupert Murdoch is a cancer on this country. And don't forget that Tucker... Rupert Murdoch is, uh, uh, certainly has much to answer for. Sorry, go on, Mona. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I was just going to say, you know, the, the, uh, the, the irony is that when a, when a small group gathered at Tucker's home, and I'm not, I don't believe that anybody should, you know, trouble people in their personal homes, but um, he made a huge fuss and he was a huge snowflake yes. about this terrible attack on him. But by the way, so apparently true. lied and exaggerated about what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't a fraction. It wasn't a nano piece of what happened to those officers. Yes. Uh, you know, no one was hurt. And, uh, and yet he was, he was yes. whining about this terrible Such thing a good that point. happened to him. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, the hypocrisy is glaring. Mona, let me ask you this. There are still GOP lawmakers who might face legal problems for their actions on 1-6. One is Congressman Mo Brooks, who famously said this in his speech to the crowd just before the insurrection kicked off. Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Congressman Eric Swalwell from the Democratic Party has filed a civil suit against Brooks and Trump and others for their alleged incitement. And late last night, the Justice Department determined that Brooks was acting for himself and not as a federal government employee when he gave that speech. So he's not immune from that lawsuit. What should happen to guys like him in your view? Because, you know, these hundreds and hundreds of ordinary people, bad people, but still ordinary folks who, who stormed the Capitol are going to pay a price. They are being charged. They are, uh, some of them have pled guilty and are going to be punished. And yet the people who uh, incited them uh, are probably not going to be punished, starting, of course, with Trump himself. I from, from my knowledge of, uh, of incitement law, I think it's going to be a tough case to say, uh, even though it seems obvious, uh, it's still going to be very hard to prove that Mo Brooks, uh, that those comments were yes. not within the realm of normal political uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rhetoric, you know, uh, urging people to fight and so on and so forth. And if you were to you know, charge him and convict him of inciting a riot, Many, would it be chilling on the speech of others who might be using military metaphors? So that's, I, I, I'm skeptical that, no, it's a, that it's there a would fair actually point. be price. Uh, Eric, given what you saw yesterday, are there any grown-ups in the GOP, aside from Liz Cheney and, and Adam Ginzinger, as Mona mentioned, you know, the Mitt Romneys of this world? Uh, we treat Marjorie Taylor Greene like she's some, you know, crazy outlier, but she's got all this company now. Louisiana Senator John Kennedy, a graduate of Oxford, supposedly a serious man, dismissed yesterday's hearings as Nancy Pelosi's political pageantry and added, quote, just because she loves drama doesn't mean I have to attend the performance. I mean, should any media organization treat any of these Republicans as serious people anymore? The, the Beltway Press work, works on this both sides uh, framework, right? If we quote Democrats, we have to quote Republicans. If, if Democrats are angry, we, the Republicans are going to be angry. The press wants to treat the Republican Party as this mainstream center-right entity. It has been dumbed down, so radicalized and dumbed down by Trump, who, who knocked down all the guardrails. He, he has given the entire party free reign to be as stupid and dangerous and radical as you want. But... You know, the press still looks at it when they, you know, the Beltway Press, they wake up every day. OK, we got to get we got to get quotes from both sides. We have to present this false yeah. facade that there's a center right versus center left battle in this country. One country is trying to defend uh, one party is trying to defend democracy in this country and the other party is trying to rip it down. The crazy part is the Republican Party is not shy about any of this anymore. There are no smoke and mirrors. They yes. hate this insurrection hearing. They don't want a single fact. They don't want voter, you know, they don't want people to vote. It is out in the open, but I really feel like a lot of the Beltway press is still kind of pretending like, do we have to acknowledge this really that we only have one sane party left in this country? Um. It's, Maybe, it's something I... that a lot of journalists find very difficult to, to acknowledge. We're out of time, Mona, very briefly, 20 oh, seconds. Okay. We're out of time. Oh, well, I, I just really quick, I just want to say that uh, I really think the focus should be not so much on efforts to prevent people from voting. Our focus needs to be on reforming the Electoral Count Act so that Republicans cannot steal it. That's the, that, that's the yes. big thing. It's not the, it's not the casting of votes that matters. A hundred percent agree with you. 100% agree. In fact, uh, we led this show uh, just a few days ago on that very subject of election subversion and how to protect against it. Mona Charon and Eric Bowler, thank you both for appearing on the show tonight. Thank you for your insights.